So imagine you wake up in the morning and it is raining, which is a pretty rare thing here in California. You might be thinking, oh, I can't wear the outfit I wanted to wear today, or I could be late to school because everyone in the Bay Area sucks at driving in the rain. Well, I'm on my way to Santa Cruz to do something I love, surfing. But I'm not the only one heading to the ocean. A single raindrop is on its way as well. Let me tell you its story. So this raindrop falls from the sky. It lands on the roof of a small, quaint house on Getzel Street in Santa Cruz. The raindrop slides down the metal roof of the house into a rain gutter and down onto a fake lawn. Instead of being absorbed into the soil, this raindrop runs right through the artificial lawn into the street. Now it's running down the side of the street. Do you remember the oil that was leaking from your car yesterday? Well, our raindrop lifts up this oil and carries it along for the journey. Oh, and the dirt in the street makes the raindrop brown and filled with sediment. Now we're running down a gutter into the sewage system. As the raindrop flows towards shore, it picks up bio waste. You might have thought it was over. No, there's still one final step on our raindrop's journey. This little raindrop, which is not so cute anymore, finally reaches the end of its sewage pipe at Mitchell's Cove on the west side of Santa Cruz. Right before it runs down into the ocean, another raindrop from a residential drainage pipe lands right on top of it. This other raindrop shares some of its nitrogen and phosphorus nutrients from garden fertilizer with our little raindrop. Now the toxic, foul-smelling, bio-waste, nutrient, and sediment-filled brown raindrop is falling. It bounces off a rock and runs with millions of its friends carrying similar pollutants right into the frothing white water of the Pacific Ocean. So I had the personal pleasure of meeting this raindrop on a rainy day last winter at Mitchell's Cove. When my brother and I paddled out, I noticed a terrible smell, but I almost thought I was imagining it. I turned to my 14-year-old brother and asked, hey, do you notice that smell? Yeah, it's terrible, he answered back. I looked down and noticed a kelp leaf floating right next to me. I reached out to touch it, and it crumbled right into 100 pieces. I could not believe what I was seeing, smelling, and feeling. What was going on? I loved surfing, and seeing the ocean fall apart right in front of my eyes was heartbreaking. Not only was the foul-smelling water dangerous to us, but I later learned that it was just one part of a larger runoff threat in Santa Cruz and throughout the Monterey Bay. But let me back up for a second. I'm a surfer. My connection with nature through the power of the waves is one of the most important things in my life. Surfing is a deeply spiritual and fulfilling experience for not only me, my brothers, and friends, but also for the global community of 35 million of us in every country and every ocean throughout the world. So the threat of toxic runoff presents a unique problem for this community of environmentalists. Imagine showing up to church on Sunday morning and a priest tells you that if you go inside, you're at a serious risk of contracting a gastrointestinal infection. You definitely still go in because one's time in church is time with the divine. This is the same way most surfers feel about the ocean, and the choice of whether to get into toxic, foul-smelling water is a predicament that too many of us face. Unfortunately, not everyone holds the ocean as dear as I do. As a result of poor environmental regulations, industrial chemical corporations, agricultural facilities, sewage treatment plants, and even private citizens dump oil, nutrients, pesticides, bio-waste, and sediment pollutants into creeks that run into the Monterey Bay, leading to kelp deforestation. This problem is also magnified by rising atmospheric temperatures due to climate change, causing the trend of winter rain seasons in California to be a higher volume of rain concentrated over a shorter period of time. During rainstorms, the volume of water overwhelms both man-made and permeable surfaces. When the volume of runoff exceeds the limit of sewage water treatment plants, the majority of it is pumped directly into the oceans, as pictured here at a pipe in Santa Cruz. So some of the solutions to this problem are pretty scary. The Rising Seas Concept Wetsuit and Marine Environmental Campaign was created by Vizsla, a leading wetsuit brand and surf rider, 
a coastline and marine conservation group. They propose a wetsuit concept that looks much like a spacesuit. Water pollution from runoff, ocean acidification from carbon dioxide emissions, and toxic oil spills from offshore drilling threaten water quality and the safety of surfers in the oceans. This wetsuit specifically utilizes a biodefense system to protect surfers from toxic bacteria from sewage runoff, waterborne viruses, and oil in the water. For now, this is just a concept to make a point. But basically, by the direction we are heading, the future of surfing in a heavily polluted ocean might possibly mean catching waves in a hazmat suit. But the implications of this go far beyond surfers, specifically harming the ecosystem of the Monterey Bay kelp forest. In the past couple years, my relationship with the kelp forest has changed. I used to think of kelp just as a slimy nuisance that catches my leash as I surf above it. But now, I've intellectually and spiritually dived into this beautiful, biodiverse, and profoundly important ecosystem. I would like to share some of what I've learned with you. Kelp forests are one of the largest living stores of carbon dioxide in the world's oceans. That means they keep CO2 out of the atmosphere and prevent ocean acidification. Brown algae kelp forests are home to 716 species of marine fish, invertebrates, and sea mammals. They serve as a vital part of the broader Monterey Bay system and also provide other ecosystem services, such as fishery habitat, while aiding in the production of goods, as simple as soap and as complex as modern pharmaceuticals. Runoff pollution, such as sewage, Industrial disposal and pesticides contribute to kelp deforestation. Sediment pollution from coastal runoff can block the sun, preventing kelp from performing photosynthesis. Kelp forests absorb an incredible amount of nutrients, and when they're blocked from photosynthesis, their growth is inhibited. The increased turbidity and nutrient levels in the water can then lead to the growth of toxic algae blooms, leading to the death of kelp forests through a cascade of effects in which sea lions, otters, and dolphins, who rely on kelp forests for food and shelter from predators, die. So one specific species that lives in these kelp forests is the Southern Pacific sea otter. Its main form of insulation is a thick coat of fur, and they use it to stay warm in cold water climates. They primarily live in kelp forest beds in groups of 10 to 100, and rely on those ecosystems for food and shelter. When the otters want to go to sleep, they wrap themselves in the kelp so that they do not drift away from their community. This also serves as protection from sharks, who cannot navigate kelp forests to eat the otters. From first-hand experience surfing next to these otters, I can attest that they're pretty cute. Oil, toxic runoff, and water pollution are the main threats to these otters. For chemical and physical reasons, an otter's fur forms an incredible waterproof seal. Water cannot break through the seal, but oil can. So basically, oil can get an otter wet, while water cannot. This will break the otter's waterproof insulation, and it will freeze and eventually die in the cold waters of the Monterey Bay. In short, toxic runoff is a threat to these sea otters, and the death of this keystone species has the potential to cause another trophic cascade this time from the top down. Specifically, how this works is that sea otters eat sea urchins, which eat kelp. A decline in the sea otter population will result in an increase in the sea urchin population. The sea urchins will then eat the kelp, causing large-scale kelp deforestation. Essentially, this is a double whammy where the kelp forest ecosystem is being assaulted from the top and bottom of the food chain simultaneously. This situation is now considered a classic example of ecosystem collapse in modern ecology and an exemplar of the importance of a particular species to maintain the integrity of an ecosystem. It is no surprise that with the presence of sea otters as a keystone species, kelp forests absorb 12 times more carbon dioxide. So you probably know about deforestation in the Amazon. Well, this is a major problem. But kelp forests 50 miles from here 
are in many ways as important in the ecosystem per unit area in terms of biodiversity and carbon dioxide absorption and storage. In this sense, kelp deforestation is as significant a global ecological and climate threat as deforestation on land. So I used to think that kelp forests were mostly a thing that prevented me from catching set waves as I <laughs> frantically struggled in a tangled mess of seaweed. And that sea otters were best for being cute and making me smile. I now understand that there is so much more to them below the surface. They are each an essential part of a biodiverse and thriving ecosystem that has global importance. So I fear that the ocean is falling apart. The degradation of our oceans due to toxic runoff not only prevents surfers from immersing themselves in the natural world, but also will have profound, wide-ranging effects on ecological degradation. Global climate change from unchecked carbon emissions is causing ocean acidification, sea level rise, and increased runoff threats. We are driving the ocean, land, and air to a point of toxicity where it's reasonable to consider a future in which we need to wear hazmat suits to connect with nature, which kind of defeats the purpose. Even more impor importantly, the ocean makes up 70% of the Earth, and it is a primary feature of this planet. Caring for the ocean is caring for the earth, and this is an integral aspect of what it means to be human. I invite you to consider the following. Whether you are a surfer or not, we are all affected by the health of our oceans. So we need the next generation of students to be activists, thinkers, collaborators, and determined environmentalists. For me, I know that I cannot single-handedly clean the world's oceans but I also know that a collaborative effort of students across the world can contribute significantly to solving environmental issues. The runoff filter that I built is my own attempt to address the problem. So the solar powered system uses sediment filters and granular activated carbon to remove bacteria, nutrients, and sediment from runoff that would otherwise go directly into the ocean. A large-scale implementation of a commercially sold runoff filter like this one could contribute significantly to reducing the volume of polluted runoff in the Monterey Bay. This is one way I'm trying to be a better steward of the ocean. I'm also asking you to consider making your own attempt to combat runoff. Collect rainwater from your gutters. Implement green roofs. Replace impermeable surfaces such as fake lawns with real gardens and native areas. Restore watersheds and fight development. And spread the word about toxic runoff. Contribute to the sea otter tax checkoff to help scientists working for sea otter recovery. Manage runoff into local storm drains, creeks, etc. AKA, don't pour toxic chemicals down your sink. Limit your use of non-organic fertilizers and pesticides by buying organic produce to reduce toxic runoff. Keep cats indoors and dispose of pet waste properly to prevent feral disease contamination in sea otters. Participate in coastal cleanup projects. And finally, do your part to combat climate change. So the city of San Francisco recently launched an initiative for its citizens that subsidizes their purchasing of rainwater collection barrels at local hardware stores. This keeps toxic runoff out of the oceans and you can use the water stored in the barrels to water plants in the summer. All it takes is a short online application and then you can go to your local hardware store to pick up a rainwater collection barrel. You can decorate it and make it look pretty as well. Low impact design and rainwater collection implementation combats many issues at once. Conserving upstream habitat, preventing toxic runoff pollution, and protecting the marine ecology of the Pacific Coast. So what I'm proposing to you is a future in which we practice environmental responsibility and efficient water resource management. We realize that being in a loving relationship with nature is what truly makes us human. In this world, surfers will be able to enjoy the ocean safely, hopefully without biodefense wetsuits. Kelp forests along the coast of California will be thriving and vibrant ecosystems 
snagging the leashes of many more surfers. And of course, the population of cute little sea otters will be growing at a rate faster than any time in the last century, keeping watch over an expanding kelp forest ecosystem. This future is one that we can all attain, but we must do it together. Thank you.